You're about to see a tour of Hapa Joe's garden. For those of you who don't know, Hapa Joe is a, it's hard to categorize this guy. He's an adventurer, an explorer, a rare fruit hunter. He's a conservationist. He goes down to South America, lives with the locals, establishes connections with the locals, and they help him find some of the rarest fruits available. He brings them back and makes them available to the public and to everyone who wants them. Put his website right here. So you guys check out his website, support this guy. He's doing amazing work. And in this video, he shows me his garden, his backyard, and then he takes me to somewhere where I call his inner sanctum, the place where he keeps all these rare seeds and little seedlings. It's a fascinating little place that uh, he was nice enough to show me. It houses some of the rarest plants and rarest fruit trees, fruit seeds that you can find anywhere in the world. So enjoy, check it out. As always, like, subscribe. Let's go to the tour. Guys, we're here in Hapa Joe's yard. He has a really... He, he has a lot of cool stuff. It's like a germplasm over here with really rare stuff. But let's start with this avocado. Joe doesn't particularly like avocados himself, but <laughs> a lot of people that watch my channel love avocados. So let's look at this. He calls this the super has, right? Super has. And yeah. so um, this, uh, my fam, my wife's family has had this on their property. It is, uh, it is a cultivar brought one. So they bought this as a super has. Yeah. Um, and planted it. Uh, I don't know, sixty years ago. Okay. And it's been here forever. This thing fruits prolifically. We get so many. Yeah. Uh, nice. People who do like avocados tend to really like this one. Yeah. Me, okay. I don't know. Avocados, they're good. They're just not my favorite. And you say these get these are ready this time of year. We're mm -hmm. this is January, so and they ripen up in January. Yep. So you can yeah. see, yeah, they're they got a bunch of these guys. Do they um, turn black or? They, no, they turn kind of that brownish okay. brown, but uh, my wife will pull these off and eat these as once they get like this. Oh, okay. She'll pull these down nice. and then letting them ri ripen off. Wow, that's but, cool. Uh, at, oh, there's the brown, like you yeah. said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and wow. in about another couple weeks, yeah. the leaves will come off uh -huh. uh, and then it'll bloom. Okay. And then we'll have flowers everywhere. Wow. Be beautiful. Nice. Very cool. Oh, I see some flower buds starting. Yep. Starting to push right there. All right, interesting. Let's look at some of these. These are atomoyas. Yeah, so this is my favorite. These are my favorite fruits. So I have uh, atomoyas. I have some priestly atomoyas, some albumpo. Uh -huh. There's a cherimoya fruit down there. Yeah. Um, I do have some grafted llama on some... here that made it, but it didn't uh, just grafted this year, so it didn't fruit here's or some, flower. Here's some big, big atomoyas right there. Look at that. Yeah, and these are all in pots. Yeah. Um, so my thing is, is I, I do have one in ground in front that I'm experimenting with and going to graft and let grow big. Uh -huh. But uh, really, I'm trying to figure out if we can grow these and fruit these in pots. And so far, yeah. I'm having a lot of good success. Nice. You see on this one, I also have a Geffner here. Geffner, Atomoya. Atomoya. Beautiful. Very cool. Good collection here. Let's look at the your cacao plant. Yeah, uh, this one... Stuff. So this is from Ronnie Kern. Oh, shout out to Ronnie Kern. Look at all this, uh, by the way, look at all this dragon fruit. Joe, Joe collects a lot of rare dragon fruit as well. Keeps them in pots. There's some cool varieties here. Yeah. So this was a gift. And this is not heated and it's a really, 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 really crappy greenhouse. Yeah. And you can see like, it really is not really a greenhouse. There's the cacao plant right there. But that is from Ronnie Kern. She gave that nice. to me two years ago. Uh -huh. um, it's an RDL, she said. And it was um, part of uh, Yang Mai. So uh, uh, nice. I was a distributor for some Yang yeah. Mai here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and and everybody was asking to give me money for doing that. And I was yeah. like, please don't bring me money. Just yeah. bring a small, cool little plant. And yeah. that's what she brought. And it's been doing awesome. Nice. Yep. Not lives through the winter doesn't get a lot of it's not really warm in there it just survives and then this is a pretty cool one this is a nona spinnikins a nona vepertorium nice i have some really rare anonas back here wow this is a vepertorium this is one that people gotta go gaga about and it does well in the winters wow. and this vepertorium if we take it out the root is like wow. it's a big tube tuber huh. so um we think this uh, grows in a place where it has yeah. uh High fire, oh, okay. Damage, and that's one of the mechanisms. Yeah, to stay. A lot of grafting. 
A lot of fig grafting going on here. Let's look inside Joe's. Uh, so this is a little greenhouse. Yeah, thing. a little pop-up greenhouse. Yeah. Um, and in here is this is my collection of stuff. So I have uh, some bariba. Um, this was repotted this year, but you can see the new flush is good. And this is from Brian Lawfer. Nice. Uh, so a nice huge bariba that he got in South America. Uh -huh. This is a uh, pondaland coconut. Oh, coconut. Yeah. Wow. So another we don't know some type of uh, uh, anona black sapote. Yeah. Um, and then this is my puteria collection. These are all kind of weird, odd ones. Yeah. So here's puteria glomerata, which is cinnamon apple. Here's gardneriana. Wow. Which is supposed to be some kind of purple one. Um, let's see here. Puteria SP Mako. This one's supposed to be a really tasty one. Wow. Let's see what's this. Uh, green sapote, which is didn't like the cold, but it's coming back. We uh, we did get a little frost yep. in here. Yep. Yeah. And then these are my babies. These are wow. my yang mai. The yang mai. Look at them. Looking good. These are the these are all grafted. We all grafted. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I have the one in the front. So I have wow. eight grafted Yang Mai, two males. Nice. And then the rest are all named varieties. Wow. Beautiful. You're gonna get fruit. Hopefully soon. Hopefully fruit. Yeah. Um I've eaten these from frozen and really enjoyed them. Yeah. Um but yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. Um, once you get it to this stage, it seems pretty hardy. And yeah. Pretty, yeah. Uh, it's just you, well, you got to get those roots growing. Yeah. The whole deal. And for those of you who are getting these Yang Mai's, um, it seems to me, anecdotally, mm -hmm. but um, once you get the Yang Mai's and they're going to be completely bare root, if it sprouts immediately, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want, I mean, really these... For some reason, like I wrapped them up in wax tape, yeah. I put them in the potting, and they really didn't sprout for maybe three or four months. Mm -hmm. And everybody else's were posting pictures, and I kept telling them that from experience that I thought, to me, when they sprout early, that's mm -hmm. like the death sign. Like mm -hmm. they're going to use up all the energy in the wood, mm -hmm. and they're not putting energy into the roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't until this last time that I truly believed it. Mm -hmm. because it seemed like everybody else was spouting and mine wasn't. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Joe, Joe. And I was like, no, mine's not. But that's good. I didn't want it to. Mm -hmm. And now you see the results. Beautiful. So. Yeah. Wow. That's some of the biggest, healthiest Yang Mai I've seen here. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Joe does a lot of fig grafting. He's a big fan of the figs. So it's grafts all over the place. My, my goal is, uh, I think, because of the ease, well, because I'm getting good at grafting and I like grafting, that, yeah. um, that we can maybe put five or six varieties and you can have a nice yeah. nice 15-gallon tree with yeah. five fig varieties. And uh -huh. I think people would really uh, want that. Yeah. I know when I was early on, I would have bought that in a heartbeat. A multi-grafted fig. A multi-grafted yeah. fig tree yeah. with five of the yeah. good varieties. I yeah. think, uh, yeah, I would have paid a good money for that. Here's some more fig trees here. This is all my mother's root stock, so I buy from uh, reliable sources. I grow them out, and I make sure that they fruit and are true to fruit yeah. Um, yeah. before I sell any any fig trees or anything. I make sure that they are true because yeah. the last thing I want to do is spread wrong genetics. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of that stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to come from me, and you know. If you're gonna make money off of, off of that, and that's your mo, man. Come on, bro. Joe, Joe's somehow I don't understand this, but he's this. We're in January, and he's getting fruits on his figs. I don't know what he's doing here, but he's getting fruits. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, beautiful. All right, nice. He's got citrus here. You have a, this is a multi grafted citrus. Here? This is a multi grafted. So this one is uh, honey tangerine, and I kind of got the grafting bug. And here in the back, I got. Uh, Miho yeah, let's, Wase. Let's take a look at this. Whoa. So Miho Wase. And then back here is Miyagawa. Oh, okay. and you can see the grass. And they took really well. That looks like a bark grass? Yeah. Oh, okay. And there's one back there. So it's just kind of trying some yeah. new stuff. And, Miho uh, Wase is, oh, is, that a, uh, is that a tangerine or a mandarin? A mandarin. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. 
Nice. It's a kefir lime. Yeah. I'm Thai, yeah. so we pull these leaves off all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You want to show us some of your dragon fruits? Yeah. You so want, you want to talk about some of the rare stuff? Oh here? man, yes. I, I so I, I dragon fruits is one that I I, I think is a great uh -huh. for Southern California. Easy to grow. Loves our climate, uh, especially in the summertime when it kind of gets drier out. Boy, they, they just seem to thrive. You put them in sand, vermiculite, something, yeah. uh, and they just grow. Uh -huh. um, so starting, I have yellow tie over here. This one is baby serrato. This one, um, very good fruit. Uh -huh. um, and this is such an interesting looking different than all the other ones. Like this one looks, has more rounded edges. This one, and, um, a lot of people are interested in this. This is black Africanus. Uh -huh. It's another different one. Uh, and it's supposed to have a very black, almost purplish fruit. Uh -huh. um, and then some of the better pink flesh. This is Delight. Uh, this is my wife's favorite. She really, really likes these. We like these uh, breakfast. So she'll unpeel it and just chop it and okay. make little cubes. Okay. So and good. You, you get good production in this size and this kind of container. Mm -hmm. So place. these are 10 gallons, uh -huh. uh, two dragon fruit per 10 gallons. Uh -huh. One per five. And how is. much? How many fruit do you get from on these? So I, I trim them. So uh, we get, last year we, it was, uh, so these are all about two years old when I kind of started to propagate these. Four of these had, we have like five or six fruits from each one. Oh, nice. Okay. So um, we got Ohana Express. This one fruited for us last year. Uh -huh. um, this was my favorite. This is the one that I really, really like. This one grows really fast. And you can see, like, these are going to be cuttings that I'll sell soon because yeah. this is the one that I want to come out. And uh -huh. then what I'll do is I'll allow a couple of come. So we just built this last year. So uh -huh. this is brand new. This was built in November. And we put all this in here, and then we trimmed a whole bunch back. And you can see I did a whole bunch of cuttings. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, tried to sell some, but, you know, dragon fruit don't sell too great sometimes. Yeah. I'm not really a dragon fruit person, yeah. but... We trimmed them back, and then I just kept all the ones that I wanted. So Condor is another good one. This one's called Frankie's Red. So this was out of Frankie's Nursery uh -huh. uh, in Hawaii. Right? In Hawaii, yeah. a really good one. Yeah. This is Chameleon in with this one. And then this one is uh, I'm excited about. These are two yellow ones. This is Annoyed Yellow with a super high bricks, like 21 that I bought, mm -hmm. uh, traded for. And then the Yellow Australia back here, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, nice. Wow. But um, again, I only sell the cuttings of the ones that have fruited and are true. Yeah. Um, or I know for a fact, well, I bought this from uh, Spicy Exotic. So unless it's uh, from a really, really trusted source, uh -huh. um, then I would sell a, a mature cutting before if you really, really wanted one. Yeah. But they fruited now, so I'm good. Cool. This is Joe's. Germplasm room. This is where he keeps all the rare, cool stuff. Let's take a look. Yeah, so um, I keep some seeds to germinate and sell as seedlings uh, yeah. for the springtime uh, as a market. Uh -huh. um, and I, so I'll show you some of the fun stuff that I have. So some of the fun stuff that I have, you know, like I have a tray here. This is my favorite fruit, Duetius tenantha. Uh -huh. And you can see, check out the red stem. Like, there's everything about this fruit is cool. I mean, it's <laughs> just everything is cool yeah. from germination to um, its big leaves. Uh, Duguetia, again, is my holy grail. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, it sparks some interest. I know I have yeah. a, a lot of uh, friends who, um, if you're into Anonas, you, you, you're going to end up in this path. path. Yeah. Here I have Salicifolia, which is another one. Um, it's cold hardy. So, Duguetia Salicifolia has taken frost along with Lanceolata okay. and Furferacea. Okay. Wow. And just much like Anonas, they, they, the way they grow is the seed comes out of the ground and the stem pushes it out of the ground. And eventually, like you said, it says it cracks open. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'll either do one of two things. It'll crack open or it'll push the seed. Yeah. So this one you can see is pushing. Yeah. Um, and then Spixia, um, Stenantha, we usually can get one that's opening. So you can see the difference between the two. So this one is pushing a seed. Yeah. So this one is Spixiana. And you can see that it pushes the seed. Uh -huh. 
coat. Whereas this one, it'll crack. So it'll crack open. And then the cotyledons will be mm. will be right there and then it'll come out open. Wow. Like that and pop open. Cool. Wow. In addition to Duguerias, Joe's got some incredibly rare stuff in here. A lot of plinias, mercerias, a lot of uh ingas, a lot of uh, a lot of different stuff here. A lot of different anonas. Here are probably my three of the latest that are my favorites. Yeah. So this one is Plenty of Splissophora. Uh, I don't I don't think there's any more <laughs> ornamental leaf than that as wow. far as ornamental. Um, and then this one is, is Eugenia Lab, SP Labicia, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it was found in um, Matthias Tomas and his wife. They named it after a turtleback. Mm -hmm. And then this is one that I'm super excited about. And this is Eugenia SP Lemon Cherry. So this uh -huh. is one from Salami Seed Hunter. Uh -huh. There are three of these in the United, four of these in the United States. <laughs> Joe Hewitt has one. Yeah. Bobby Biswas has the other one. Uh -huh. I have two. Uh -huh. And that's it. Really? Wow. And um, Salami, this is number one uh -huh. tasting um, Eugenia. Really? And wow. I have babied this one so much. Yeah. Um, this one is a very special one for me. Uh, and I have two. He specializes two in Eugenia's, and he said that's his favorite. That's Eugenia. his favorite, number one. Yeah. Wow. So, and I have um, I have two of his other top three okay. that are SPs in here, too. Yeah. These are really, really cool, and I can't wait to grow these. And I got a bunch more of these. This is Eugenia Anga, Anga, Tis, Anga Stiston. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. But such a cool little, yeah. and I so mean, small. so small, <laughs> and it's a fruit yeah. at a tree like this tall. Oh, because okay. like this, a little bush. They're little yeah. tiny bushes. Yeah. So imagine having a hedge of these. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why would you want to grow grass when you can grow this? A hedge of and those fruit. that makes really delicious rare fruit. Right. Yeah. And I mean, same with this uh, Cello Viennia, right? Mm -hmm. Same uh, with those. Eugenia Cello Viennia is a little bush, not super tall at all, maybe at most two or three feet tall. And it makes really delicious fruit. This makes good little simple fruit. Yeah. And then, you know, these are the things you just go out and, you know, work in the garden yeah. and younger fruits and you can talk about it and there's stories and yeah. you can share with you know the neighbors people are i get to people just stop in my neighbor in my yard and just yeah. what's that what's that yeah. all the time nice yeah and then you can tell them all about the all about the rare stuff yeah, yeah. let's look in here so this is my this is this is my vip tent this is this the, is the, this is the, this VIP. the vip tent so this is the stuff where i keep yeah. all my my super good stuff yeah, yeah. but here's an anona leptopatala uh -huh. um there's another Porcellia nitida, which is looking really nice. Um, this is some kind. This is a. I don't know what Nona that is. That's some kind of a Nona. Mm -hmm. um, which one is that? I don't even know. I think that's a Vepertorium. What are oh, all, that what is. Are all, what are all these here? So these are all Pulisan. Pulisan. Okay. Pulisan. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing that I'm, I also want to look for more lychee type fruit mm -hmm. that will grow, that might be able to grow in colder temperatures mm -hmm. or be able to grow in a subtropical area. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Super rare stuff in here. It looks like Joe's collection of, uh, the VIP room. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And all this other stuff, yeah. and I'm just getting ready for springtime. And all this stuff here is... And, uh, you know, I want to stay off the eBay market. I want to just offer good good prices. I want people to understand, you know, that I'm going to offer at a reasonable prices. This is what I need to be able to sell these seedlings, to be able to keep a sustainable business mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. um, people who know me and meet me know I'm not, you know... There's nothing rich or greedy about me. Yeah. I'm a middle school science teacher that yeah. loves this yeah. and would just like to make enough money yeah. to keep doing it. This is not something that you're going to become a millionaire off of. This is no way. Like a, no a, way. A project that you, something you're doing, something uh, you love. So this is what my house looks like after a seed drop. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you know, the, the last two weeks, or the last week, so I came back from a uh, trip and then this is, I spend uh, literally, Probably twelve hours in here a day packing uh -huh. seeds. Packing seeds. Um, I pick. I, so if you want to know how I do it, if I get an order, I write out the tag, yeah. and then I open up. Yeah, you can show see. us the process. So this is Talesia Escalante yeah. Patomba. 
So I'll open it up and then I'll go through and I'll look and you can see how I store. Mm -hmm. And then I'll actually inspect and you can see like this one is germinated. Mm -hmm. So I don't no no longer do I advertise germinated, mm -hmm. but if it's germinated, I've already taken my seeds out. Mm -hmm. So if you order today, guess what you get? A germinated Patamba. Nice. <laughs> but cool. um, so I write the tag out and then I come in here, I put the tag on here and then if you've ordered from me, you know that uh, either I tape it to your bag so I don't lose it, and then I don't lose your order, or I put it in, if you order over 150, I, I uh, put it in priority mail and just put it in a box for you and then upgrade it for free. Mm. Nice. Um, and, that's, and that's my process. So I inspect every seed that goes in. Mm. I do mess up every now and then. Yeah. If you send me an email with a picture, we'll mm. fix it. Yeah. Um, as long as you, as you work with me and you let me fix it, then I will make you happy. I promise. Cool. Is there a, you, do you want to talk about a certain, your, your go-to soil mix for growing a lot of these seeds out? Um, I that... think, uh, so I'm going to tell you the guy who, who you need to watch. Um, I, you can go to my YouTube, but, um, is, um, Laguna Hills nursery. Oh yeah. Gary Matsumoto. Gary, yeah. Gary, that's the guy. Yeah. Listen to his videos. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you, the only thing I'm going to tell you different than him is I think he uses a little bit more peat moss than I would. <laughs> and I think he does that only because he needs to lighten up the mix. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a, a, a property. Okay. Um, I would, uh, but I would listen to his videos. Yep. 100%. He's a, a doctor. Very, Super very smart. Guy, yeah. Very knowledgeable. Yeah. He's an ex-doctor who went into the botany business. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he, he attacks this like I do, like a scientist and uh -huh. thinking about, what do roots need yeah. to live? Yeah. That's what really changed my growing is listening to him yeah. and taking my own little spin off of it. Yeah. Um, but awesome. he's he's 100%. I believe everything he says. Yeah. Uh, and I would highly suggest yep. going there. Yep, yep, yep. Shout out to Gary Batswoka. Absolutely. Super awesome YouTube channel. Look at all the look at all these stuff. There's some things in here that only can only Joe can get. And only exists in a very, very few places. This stuff is super rare. Some of these things inside these little containers. Fruits that you can't find pretty much. Unless you go to yeah, Brazil yourself and you're not get them. Find this one. Yeah. yeah. Yep, there's some stuff in here that, uh, yeah. yeah. This is the one you want. Fire it up here on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Flora. I, I really like this one. So this one is if you like avocados, uh -huh. then you're going to like, and this is kind of like a cross between an avocado and an abiyu. Really? It okay, was kind weird. of creamy, creamy like an avocado, uh -huh. not as sweet as an abiyu. Okay. Creamy like so an I really liked it. Right. And then these are all mama cadellas. Uh -huh. These are wow. good too. Mama cadella. So um, this is, um, it's an orange fruit and it's like, Bubble gum. Orange fruit it's like it's bubble sweet, gum. sweet, and then you chew it, and it turns into just like fibery string. Uh -huh. Um, after about five minutes, and then you just spit it out. But it's wow. like chewing gum. Oh, that's so cool! It's a really cool fruit. I really, really enjoyed it. These, did yeah. You about these, what's the name of it? Um, Brosmium gaudici, uh, Mama Cadella. <laughs> that's funny. And that's a, it's a really good. Yeah. I really, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting fruit. Yeah. And um. Yeah, it's like bubble gum. And uh, yeah. I mean, if you don't mind spitting out, I mean, some people I'm sure are going to be averse to spitting it out. Yeah. But that's what it was. Yeah. And I kept, um, so Arthur didn't really like it. So my friend Arthur, uh -huh. he doesn't really like it. Uh -huh. But the, the, uh, his, um, his uh, kind of like, not a, not a housekeeper, but like a friend, uh, Dalva, uh -huh. has an older lady who kind of takes care of him. She loved them. We kids, we just kept eating them all day. Yeah. But Arthur, he didn't like them. This is growing a tree. A tree. Shrub. It's like a bush, kind of like a medium yeah. sized bush. Medium sized bush. Yeah, nice. nothing. It was all within. And where did you, what part of the world did you? Cerrado. So Alto Paraiso, oh, Brazil. okay. Brazilia. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and it's, um, yeah. that was a good one. Cilicia crassiflora. Uh -huh. So Cilicia crassiflora and Cilicia elliptica. Uh -huh. These two, they call the poor man's lychee. Poor man's lychee, interesting. The okay. Brazilian poor man's lychee, uh -huh. which I would say is not it more translates to like the common man's uh -huh. lychee, uh -huh. but also I would say lychee is is more of the 
it's a really good fruit, big seed, but very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. Wow, man. So that's yeah, crazy. that's another yeah. Serato species. Campo Manesia, I think are gonna be, uh, for container growns are gonna be great. Uh, also they, um, Campo Manesia, the Serato species and the Adamantium uh -huh. and Eugenia Kaipora. Uh. Yeah. Eugenie Kaipora is a kind of like a spicy loquat. Uh, uh, all three have um, flowered within a year. Uh -huh. They said about a year to a year and a half. Yeah. We have some people who have said they have flowered. Uh -huh. So wow. that's interesting. That is interesting. Um, wow. So it's very cool. Yeah. Look at in there. Here we got uh, the, yeah the a lot of Anona Spinskins, yeah. Guedia, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of biodiversity going on here, guys. You got your own little mini rainforest in here. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm trying to help other people yeah. create their own. Yeah. That's that's what this yeah. room is for. Yeah. And uh, man. Yeah. Bye and and March help me clear some of this stuff out so man. I can go get some more stuff. <laughs>